Welcome to another edition of the Strivers Logbooks. This entry is a bit of a shocker as it shows the journey of the jellyfish. Despite its rather grounded name, it has had an interesting little adventure in the Risk of Rain world. A curious creature that has been on the planet since the first public edition of the game, at least the ones that I have been able to track down, that being 0.28.9.2. It bears the resemblance of a Carbidea marsupalis jellyfish, except that it has two tentacles rather than the many we see on its real life counterpart. In Risk of Rain 1, it slowly flies towards the survivor before it gets close and initiates a dash. Upon contact, it will shock the survivor for meager damage. Without the first game does not really allow you to attack anything that's not in the same altitude as you, unless you are a chef, you'll often have to wait for them to reach you or seek higher ground to even get a chance to strike them. They are rather challenging to take down because of this, especially for melee characters, but by themselves they are a nuisance with their low health and damage. But the thing about jellyfish is that the smaller kind almost never travel alone. They stick together in groups or blooms or smacks. Very few things in this game is as terrifying as seeing a massive smack of jellyfish slowly approaching you. Sometimes you cannot even tell how many of them there are because they all just clutter up into this ball. It may seem like there is only one or two jellyfish chasing you, when in reality there are about 20 or 200 give or take a few. They can also be spawned by an overloading colossus, which is a pretty neat alteration for the elites. Throughout their floaty lifespan they received no gameplay changes or even bug fixes, at least none that were publicly documented. I suppose they were just perfect from the start. Keep in mind 1.2 had 33 pages worth of reported bugs, and I doubt they would have the patience to write them all down in the patch notes. Despite this, the jellies do have some interesting quirks. There are no elite jellyfish, vagrant excluded, Happiest Mask or Jar of Ghosts will not spawn ghosts of the jellies and they do not receive knockback, they just power through everything. Going through its log reveals a couple of things to us. Firstly, we learn that the two tentacles they have are actually branches of tentacles wrapped around themselves. It is also explained that they achieve flight because of the gases inside them, as well as using their tentacles for pulsation. I always liked how the Risk of Rain 1 logs would have the survivor trying to make sense of the planet's inhabitants with science. Further down we read about how the jellyfish attack by unleashing an electrostatic charge with the same gases they use to fly around. Interestingly enough, this log also shows us that the survivor has pre-installed weather shielding, as the jellyfish's sting penetrated it. I do wonder if it works similar to the personal shield generator we would see in the next game. Something curious is that the survivor notes how the jellyfish are seen sunbathing and absorbing the strange fumes from the planet. That is, when they're not too busy forcing the survivor to do their best lighting rod impression. Before we move to the jellyfish's more spherical version, a quick advertisement break. Welcome back. The jellyfish were first teased in their 8th dev blog on the 16th of November 2017, which would hint at their rework. In Risk of Rain 2, the jellyfish do not fly towards you to sting you with their tendrils, but now they will glow before detonating themselves and exploding. As you would guess, this does kill the jellyfish. Dealing enough damage will interrupt the martyrdom. As a matter of fact, the jellyfish can now be stunned and knocked back. That latter one is especially important as they are often victim of being launched into walls at high speeds. And yes, this also does kill the jellyfish. Unlike Risk of Rain 1, the jellyfish can have elite aspects, and Happiest Mask will spawn ghosts of the jellyfish. The ghost, now terrified of the afterlife, will immediately try to kill itself. It is rather morbid if you think about it. Just to suffer. This redesign was a good change, as they now fill a unique niche of being obstacles on a timer you have to manage. Their slow airspeed gives you plenty of time to intercept their approach, and gives you room to still prioritize more dangerous targets. If they somehow still manage to sneak by, the detonation process still gives you room to either get away or quickly stun them, if you have the reflexes and tools to do so. You can let them explode to get some leeway, but then you're losing money, which does add an interesting dynamic to think about. With the way they constantly try to fly towards the player, they also add pressure to the driver, forcing them to stay on the move and not camp a single location. They serve a similar function as they did in the first game, but now with a different strategy of attack. Moving on to their history with patches, and there's barely anything. The Scorch Takers update increased their proc coefficient for their explosion from 1 to 2, meaning that they will be far more reliable at proccing elite effects. They will now have an even higher chance of proccing items. Good thing enemies can't have items, right? Eh. 
While the Hidden Realms update did not affect the Jellyfish directly, its inclusion of the Void Realms did. In the Void you fight in small bubbles while enemies get progressively more items throughout the waves. If you would be so unlucky to have the Jellyfish chosen as your enemy, then you're in for an uphill struggle. The explosion of the Jellyfish covered so much space that unless you can crowd control them, you will probably take a hit or two or be forced out the bubble. Now with the increased proc coefficient, that hit might include a Sticky Bomb, an ATG missile or an ukulele solo. This also applies for the evolution artifact in the artifacts update. Apart from that, the elegantly named 4233443 patch that went live on the 10th of October 2019 fixed flying AIs from going to the ground, including Jellyfish. The skills 2.0 update gave us the log of the Jellyfish and introduced the USC biologist D. Furden and his bodyguard Farson. They would go on to explain the nature of the enemies, provide scientific details to an even higher degree than the first game's log, and also get into hijinks, often at Farson's expense. Furden notes that the Icarian jellyfish, as he has named them, is about 2 meters in diameter, which is huge, and to differ from the Risk Frame 1 version, their two tentacle branches are seemingly reduced to just being two tentacles. It is nice to see that this law confirms that the Medusa are still floating around the great blue seas of Earth. The gas explanation is still around to explain their movement, and curiously enough, the detail of how they sunbathe was carried over from the predecessor. Sometimes I can see jellyfish just lying around in the game, not approaching me unless I agitate them. I wonder if this is an intentional nod to the log detail, or just a perfectly fitting bug. The log ends on Farson approaching the jellyfish and feeling its electric wrath, though it makes it out okay. From how they explain the explosion, you would almost think it would act more like a strong flashbang in game though the explosion does not cause any sort of blindness, unlike the burns, which are very much still present. That about wraps up everything that is to talk about the jellyfish, an inhabitant almost untouched by patches, but probably affected the heaviest by the evolution to 3D. This has been the Survivor's Logbooks, over and out. Normally I don't really do these types of outros for Survivor's logbooks, and I'm not really planning on making this a trend, but I just want to give a very big thank you to Phobos, my Discord server moderator as well as my YouTube live chat moderator. He has taught me how to upscale pixel art using the nearest neighbor technique, and because of that I now have access to far better Risk of Rain 1 sprites for the Risk of Rain 1 segment of these videos. As you can probably see the result is now much better and I don't really have to use those blurry uh, sprites that I did in my earlier videos. So a huge thank you to Phobos and I also recommend you check out his channel. He has done some incredible motion graphic work on some Kerbal Space Program project videos and community projects are really cool. So I just recommend, you know, checking it out. Maybe you'll get engaged in it. Apart from that, I also hope you're all enjoying the Survivor's Logbooks. This is mostly how the Risk of Rain content is going to be looking forward. As always, thank you all for watching and I hope you have a cozy evening.